Hello everyone, Ember Power here, and welcome back to a new video. In this one, I'm just going to be taking a look at a couple of new reveals that were revealed from Paldea Evolved. So first up, we've got a Fortress EX, 270 HP Terrastal Pokemon, which is pretty decent. It does have the effect Terrastal, which means it won't take any damage while on the bench. So realistically, by the time Paldea Evolved comes around and we've been through rotation, I truthfully don't see there being many good spread decks post-rotation. I think realistically Greninja, or I know you said Greninja break there, but like Radiant Greninja in like Chen Pao, Baxcalibur X maybe could be a bit of a threat post-rotation. So having the Terrestrial effect is pretty decent, but overall it's not really going to change, you know, the core elements of Fortress CX. Of course, being a little bit bulkier at 270 is nice, but yeah, Terrestrial effect not really going to be affecting this Pokemon all that much. It does have the ability Explosive Energy that says once in your turn, you may search your deck for five basic grass energy, or up to, and then you attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. However, if you do this, Fortress is now knocked out. So if you use this ability, you go up two prize cards, but this, this should be fairly familiar to most people because it's very reminiscent of Electro GX, which killed itself to search your deck for, or I think it was from the Disco Pile, five different energies. Now, Electrode could accelerate special energy, which, which was you know, one of the reasons why it was so strong. But this is, of course, only accelerating basic grass energies. So what we need to see is if there's going to be any viable partners for Fortress, because if there's nothing worth powering up, then there is obviously no point in giving our opponents two prize cards. So unfortunately, there just isn't that many good grass attackers. Now, funnily enough, there has been a point made that Wu Qian has not been revealed from the set. It's currently the only legendary of Treasures of Ruin to not be revealed, so... If I had to make an estimate, Wu Qian will be revealed very soon. I'd imagine probably, well, um, realistically, they can't leave it more than the 7th of April, any later than that, because the set comes out on the April 14th. So they have to reveal Wu Qian by the 7th at the very latest. So Wu Qian can end up being this amazing grass type attacker, but obviously we don't know that until we've seen the card. So what do we have in standard currently for Fortress? Well, we have Surviper V-Star, which is probably what most people assumed because it's V-Star power could theoretically get a one-hit KO doing 60 damage for every Grass Ninja attached to it. So there is that. But there is, of course, also Blissey V, which I think could honestly be the best use for Fortress, at least initially. So Blissey V, Mill Tank, not really a deck that survives rotation because of the amount of different special energy that you lose, primarily powerful colors. However, just being able to Fortress 5 basic Grass Energy onto Blissey V means that you have 7 energy base, which is amazing. Now, theoretically, you could knock out 2 Fortress, but I think it's probably better to just force your opponent to KO a Blissey, or 2 Blisseys, I should say, and a Fortress, and do the prize mapping that way. But either way, just having access to the... I keep wanting to call her Lono, but that's not her name. It's like Irono or something. I still can't pronounce her name. The one that shuffles your opponent's hand and your hand into your deck, or I'll put it on the bottom of your deck, sorry, and then you draw a card for each remaining prize card each player has. So basically, as soon as you've activated this effect, which is preferably on turn two, then you can shrink your opponent's hand down, down to four cards. And then as soon as they knock out Blissey, you can shrink their hand down to two cards. So assuming Blissey isn't getting these one cures every single turn, you can, of course, provide massive disruption with Lono or I don't know, or however do you say her name. So yeah, Fortress could be good there. Wu Qian, obviously we haven't seen. There's also worth mentioning there's actually going to be a Bellibolt EX. There's a, there apparently is actually supposed to be at least five more EXs coming total, including Bellibolt. So, well, might not include Bellibolt. I can't remember exactly, but there is supposed to be several more EXs. Maybe we'll see multiple Grass EX in the set. I doubt it, but we could, we could theoretically see them yet. So... Yeah, Fortress could be a good partner for Wu Chen, but of course we haven't seen Wu Chen yet, so we can't really make that judgment. Also, I should probably talk about the attack. Guard Press, 2 Grass Energy, does 120. During your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon takes 30 less. It's okay. Um, This wording does say after weakness and resistance, which is a wee bit annoying, because obviously if a Fire-type move just hits this card, it's probably dead. But either way, Guard Press doing 120, taking 30 less. I mean, it's okay as like a tanky kind of attacker. But realistically, you're never wanting to attack with Fortress. You just want to care it and put the energy somewhere else to, you know, be more meaningful, I guess. Now, you could do some kind of weird tanky Fortress deck where you start using Cheryl and then you knock them out to reattach energy and you disrupt your opponent and you tank and all the rest of it. But I think realistically, 
Most people care about this card for the ability. Then we see Annihilate BX, 320 HP, stage 2 fighting type, has the attack Angry Grudge, that for a single fighting energy, allows you to place up to 12 damage counters, and it does 20 damage for each damage counter you placed on Annihilate in this way. So you can actually do up to 240 damage for one fighting energy, which is really solid. Um, unfortunately, it does lower your HP down significantly, so you lose a bit of that tank ability. So you go down from 320 to 200 if you use this to its full effect. Now, most of the time, I don't think you actually need to place 12 damage counters, which is, of course, ideal. You know, you don't want to lower yourself down to 200 HP. So you could realistically only do like, what, 180? And then at that point, you're 2 at curing everything in the game regardless. So you could do this like 2 at kill stuff, and then you hopefully still tank a hit. I mean, we do have the rock chest plate to take 30 less. And then you can play a Cheryl or something. And there is like Arvin in the format to get tool cards and rare candy. So that's a wee, at least a wee bit more consistent. And then Seismic Toss does 150 for a fighting and colors. Pretty boring attack. But overall, to be honest, I think this card is okay. It's definitely like one of the better Cheryl loop cards that I've seen. Again, zone was dependent on how much energy your opponent had in play, really. Kulava was just kind of like awkward to set up and did the 60 damage switch into a bench Pokemon, which realistically could be good with Mimikyu. But I think this, this might end up being one of the stronger Shao loops, basically, post-rotation. So definitely keep an eye out for this Annihilate. Also have the single prize Annihilate that does 70 damage for each prize card your opponent's taken. Also for a single fighting energy. So you have this like single prize option within the deck already. So as soon as your opponent's KO'd two of these, then you promote a single prize Annihilate and you start swinging for 280. So yeah, doesn't seem terrible. You also have his Mimikyu with the ability Safeguard, Frontal Damage, done to by your opponent's Frontal Damage, fought by Pokemon, by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon, EX and V. So it's basically the new gen's Mil Tank, effectively, for this new generation of sets. Is it better than Mil Tank? Yes, typically because you're walling out both EX and V. Mil Tank only walls out Vs. There are some key differences between this and Mil Tank, though, for example. Ghost Eye taking one Psychic and a Colors to play seven damage counters. That's arguably better damage than what Route can do most of the time. However, I think Route's more accessible in some decks because of the double turbo attack cost. And then, of course, Mimikyu only has 70 HP, whereas Miltank has 110. And that could make all the difference if, you know, single price tech cards end up swinging for more damage than, you know, well. If single prize tech cards can basically want to kill Mimikyu, then that's obviously going to be a bit of a problem for these stall kind of control decks, or is even if this is a tech card. But I still think this card will see a bunch of play. You can find it with level ball, which is really nice, so it's easily slottable into like these evolving EX decks. But yeah, seems like a very, very solid card overall, I would say. And yeah, no Wu Qian is sad. Hopefully we'll see Wu Qian soon enough. But um, yeah. Overall, seems like okay reveals. I don't think any of these will break the game in any way. Maybe Mimikyu will be a lot more competitive, but Fortress EX, we'll have to wait and see what other grass-type Pokemon are revealed and released. So yeah, it's been Amber Power. Thank you for watching, and yeah, thank you for watching. See you all next time.